नमस्ते हेलो वेलकम अगेन वेलकम बैक टू एडू शोर्स सीरीज ऑन इंट्रोडक्टरी माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स we are doing chapter 6 of man q which talks about the price ceiling price floor and taxation so we've already covered price ceiling and price floor uh, price floor in the previous video so if you want to learn that please watch the video before this and in this class we are going to learn about taxation how do taxes impact impact the demand curve the supply curve and what is the incidence of tax which means that how is the burden of the tax distributed between the suppliers and the demanders all right so this is all from manku chapter 6 let's dive in this is introductory microeconomics semester 1 and this is the chapter on taxation so let's dive in everyone all right so the first question first what is tax what are taxes taxes are uh that's the revenue that the government needs to generate in order to fund public expenses so in order to build schools roads bridges national defense the government needs money how does this money come from this money comes from the government imposing taxation on our consumption of goods and services it's the government uh, imposes direct tax which is income tax it imposes indirect tax which is gst so how does this impact our demand for goods and services that's what we're going to do so we're going to learn about the incidence of tax which means that how is the burden of tax shared between producers and consumers which basically means that if there was no tax what is the price that we would pay and with tax what is the extra that consumers are paying and what is the reduction in price that the producers are taking all right so let's go on to understand about taxation and its impact on demand and supply let's go all right so the first thing that i have here for you is a diagram this is a diagram on the market of pizzas so pizzas what was found out has a regular demand curve it has a regular supply curve and without any taxation the demand curve for pizzas the demand for pizzas was 500 units in equilibrium this is the equilibrium the price was 10 dollars okay now uh, so let's say this would be like a standard demand curve so for example let's say the quantity demanded is something like 1000 minus price okay so that's like the standard demand curve and in this case the price there is one price okay so this price is what is paid by the consumers and what is received by the producers okay we also call this this price which is paid by the uh, paid by the demanders and the price which is re re received by the suppliers it's the same so the price which is paid by the demanders of goods is equal to the price which is paid by the supplier which is received by the suppliers and that is a common price okay so till now we've just talked about one single price okay with when there was no taxation we did not need to talk about the producer price or the consumer price it was one single price now when there is tax there will be a difference between the price consumers pay and the price producers receive so if there's a 20% gst then consumers let's say are paying 120 rupees but the producers are receiving only 100 rupees so there's a difference between the price that a consumer pays and a and the and the revenue that the producer receives all right so let's say this was the market for pre pizzas now let's say the government imposes a taxation of 1.5 dollars per unit of pizzas on the buyers okay so how are we supposed to deal with this the tax is 1.5 dollars per unit on the producers all right so let's look at this so let's say the quantity demanded the demand curve was on the not the producers this is the consumers 1000 minus p this is the demand curve let's say for example now there's a there's a tax which is imposed on buyers there's a tax which is imposed on consumers on the demanders of goods so now this price is the price that consumers pay all right so this is the price that the demanders of good pays demanders is pt so pd stands for the price 
that the demanders of the goods pay. Okay. But now this PD will be equal to what? This PD will be equal to if there is a 1.5 unit tax, it the price that the consumers pay or the demanders pay will be equal to the price that the supplier is. So out of this price, 1.5 needs to be subtracted and then I shall get the price that the suppliers receive. So the price that the consumers pay or the demanders pay is price that the suppliers receive plus $1.5. In general, that's the price that the suppliers receive plus whatever is the amount of taxation. So if I want to, so this is the demand curve from the producers, from the consumers perspective. If I replace this PD with PS plus D, let's see what I get. Okay. So when there is a tax, if I open this bracket up, this becomes QD is equal to 1000 minus T minus PS. Okay. So look at these two equations. Look at this equation here and look at this equation here. What is the difference between those two equations? The difference is in the intercept. Okay. The intercept of the demand curve with taxation is lower than the intercept of the demand curve without taxation. Okay. So it means that when a tax is imposed, it appears that the demand curve has shifted down by the amount of tax. Okay. So it appears that the demand curve has fallen down by the amount of tax. So if initially the demand curve was D1. The demand curve after tax is this much because uh, this is what the producers will receive. Okay, this the red line shows the line of the demand curve where the this will be the price that the producers will receive. And because we need to match this to the actual demand curve, so we need the suppliers to supply the goods that the you know consumers are buying. Okay. So we need to actually work with this D2, the new demand curve that we generated. Okay, so the old demand curve, which was, let's say this minus PD, this is inclusive of tax. We need to work with this demand curve, with the, which, is, which shows taxation separately. So we know this is the price that the producers are receiving. And according to this price, they will decide whether they want to supply goods in this market or not. So this, my friends, is the more important curve for us to follow. Because according to this curve, will the producers decide whether they want to sell a good or not? So D2 is the, is the demand curve which is important, which is relevant to us. Okay, so we will have two demand curves. This is the demand curve according to PD. So this is the price that the consumer pays, but this is the demand curve according to PS. This is the price which the producers receive. Okay, so the equilibrium will be established according to D2. Yes, you are correct. It will be according to D2. All right, so let's move forward. So the new equilibrium right here is according to D2. So we take the new demand curve and we, uh, we see the point of intersection with the original supply curve. And we see that the quantity demanded has now fallen to 450. The price has now fallen to 9.5. But remember 9.5 is the price that the producers are getting. Okay, earlier producers were getting $10 and they were supplying 500. Now they are getting $9.5 and they are supplying 450. But the consumers are actually paying 11. 
okay because the consumers are still paying according to the original demand curve the producers are receiving according to the new demand curve okay so the difference is the amount of taxation this is the tax this is the this is the government revenue so from this you can calculate what is the government's revenue the government's revenue is going to be 1.5 multiplied by 450 okay so the government's revenue is going to be something around 675 right so this is the government's revenue and this is what imposition of the tax has done before tax quantity demanded and sold was 500 and the price was 10 after tax the quantity demanded and sold is 450 the price is 11 and the price that the producers receive is 950 okay i hope each and every part of this is clear to you all now the next is the incidence of tax which is how was the tax distributed between the different market participants now if you see here the buyers are paying one dollar more the sellers are getting 50 cents less right so effectively so effectively the tax burden is more on the buyers here and less on the sellers because the consumers are paying one dollar more and the producers are receiving one dollar uh, 0.5 cents less so that is the incidence of tax. That is how the burden of this tax is shared among the different market participants. So in this case, we can always find the incidence of tax by comparing it to the original state. So in the original state, you can compare the original state with the new state. So the buyers are paying $1 more. The producers are getting 50 cents less. All right. So this distribution of the 1.5 is called the incidence of tax. Now the next thing that we have to do is to see what happens if the tax was imposed on the sellers and not the buyers. So it's the same situation, uh, but now there's a $1.5 tax which is imposed on the seller. So if this is the seller's curve, this is the supply curve. The supply curve shows the different quantities and prices that the supplier wants. So supplier wants to sell $510. But now plus added to this $10 is going to be a tax amount. So there will be something which will go to the government and what the buyers will get, will pay, will be what the suppliers get plus a tax amount. So essentially we will add something to the supplier's price. So how does that shift the supply curve? So let's take an example of a supply curve. A supply curve is, let's say, something like this, that 2S is equal to 2PS. It's a simple upward sloping supply curve. Okay. So PS, that means, is QS by 2, right? Uh, so PS is QS by 2. So if I add T on both sides... Qs plus Qs by 2 plus T, and this is Ps plus T. Now, Ps plus T is Pd. So, Pd is equal to Qs plus 2, uh, Qs by 2 plus T. Now, the this current supply curve, the equation of the supply curve is Qs is equal to 2 Ps. Okay. If I, this is Ps is equal to Qs by 2. Now, P is on the vertical axis and Q is on the horizontal axis. The new supply curve is PD is equal to QS by 2 plus T. So, the difference between this curve and this curve is that this curve has a plus T. So, there is an intercept. So, the whole supply curve, so comparing this with this, PD is equal to QS by 2 plus T. So the whole, sub, the difference between the two is the plus T term. This gets an intercept of plus T. So the whole supply curve shifts up by an amount of T. That's how tax will change the supply curve. The supply curve shifts up by an amount T. So everyone, to reiterate this point, when a tax is imposed on 
the when a tax is imposed on the buyer okay so we we done the equation qt is let's say equal to 1000 minus p uh we'll take p to the other side because p is the vertical intercept and uh, so this is uh, what what does the this is the this is what the buyers pay if i subtract some t out of it the sellers what they get is this 1000 minus t minus qs so this is the buyer's demand curve and this is the demand curve which shows us that the price that the sellers will get right so uh, so the demand curve as you can see the difference between the first if the first demand curve also i write it as pt is equal to 1000 minus t so what we had done was that the difference between the first demand curve and this demand curve was that this has a lower intercept. So the demand curve shifted down by the amount of the tax. Okay, so if you if a tax is imposed on the buyer, the demand curve shifts down by the in by the this is the demand curve, right? So the demand curve shifts down by the amount of the tax. Okay, so this is the this is the this is what the buyers pay, and this is what the suppliers get. Okay, so this is for the demand curve. The su the supply curve, on the other hand, is the opposite. If this the the for the supply curve, when a tax is imposed, the supply curve shifts up. The supply curve shifts up by the amount of the tax. If this is the tax, the supply curve shifts up by the amount of the tax. Okay, so this is what the suppliers get, but this is what the buyers pay. All right, so these are the two differences between the treatment of tax on the demand curve and the supply curve. For the demand curve, the demand curve shifts down by the amount of the tax. For the supply curve, the supply curve shifts up by the amount of the tax. Okay, so the demand curve is shifting down by the amount of the tax, and the supply curve is shifting up by the amount of the tax. Okay, so uh, every time we see what is happening to the intercept, the intercept is the p term. So the intercept here shows that the intercept has become lower for the demand curve, but the intercept rises for the supply. All right, so I hope that is clear. Now moving, uh, moving back. Right, so the supply curve is going to shift up by the amount of the tax that shifts up. Um, this is the price that the buyers pay. The red line is the price that the buyers pay. All right, so with the new supply curve and the original demand curve, the, the quantity demanded, the quantity, equilibrium quantity is 450. The price increases to 11. The price, this is the this is the price in the market that is eleven, but the price that the buyers, uh, the suppliers get is only nine point five. So what you see is that the the quantity and the price is the same whether the tax is imposed on the buyers and the sellers, right? In both the equations, if you noticed, we had the same numbers. The, the price that the buyers paid was 11. The price that the suppliers bought was 9.5. The tax was 1.5. And the equilibrium quantity fell from 500 to 450. So the effect of uh, a tax imposed on buyers or sellers is the same because ultimately it's the buyer who has to pay the higher price for, for the amount of the tax. Okay, so the tax incidence is the same, whether the tax is imposed on the buyer or the seller. So whether we shift the demand curve down or whether we shift the supply curve up, it's the same thing. Okay, so the tax, the, the, the end result is that the tax, it drives a wedge between the price that the buyers are paying and the price that the sellers are receiving.
All right. So now the next thing that we will do is to see that how does elasticity affect how much of the tax burden is uh, absorbed by the sellers and how much of it is absorbed by the buyers. So let's see. Now, the general kind of sense is that the more elastic something is, the less burden it will take, the less you want to increase the price because it's very elastic. And the more inelastic something is, the more you can increase the price, right? So here if we have so here we have a case where let's say the supply curve is more elastic. So I can even draw a more elastic supply curve than this one. So let's say the supply curve is really elastic. If the supply curve is really elastic and there is kind of a, a tax is imposed, then the supplier's burden is of the tax is going to be much lesser and the buyer's burden on the tax is going to be much more. Why? Because the demand curve is inelastic. So if the demand curve is inelastic, then more, then you will increase the price without really uh, losing a lot of quantity. So whichever is the more inelastic, uh, that kind of, uh, that group will take a larger hit. So in this case, the demand curve is more inelastic. So the buyer's share of the tax burden, which is what we can see here, that if there was no tax, this was the price. But with tax, the buyer's price has increased by a lot, but the seller's price has not reduced by a lot. So the buyer's burden is much more. It's far easier for sellers to leave the market than buyers. So buyers have to bear most of the tax burden. And a similar example would be that if the demand curve is more elastic and the supply curve is less elastic, then, uh, and if a tax is imposed, then it is the buyers which will have a lower increase in price, but the sellers will have a larger drop in price. So demand is more elastic, so you will not really want to increase the price by much. So it is the sellers who are going to bear a larger brunt of a tax imposition. Okay, so in this case, the buyer's share is less and the seller's share is more. All right. So if even if you, you know, kind of impose a tax on a luxury good, but if the luxury good is, um, is elastic, then it is the suppliers who are going to bear the brunt of the tax and not really the uh, demanders. All right. So... All right, this is another, this is a mathematical way of how the, you know, tax incidence is calculated. So the, cons the consumer's tax incidence is 100 into elasticity of supply divided by elasticity of demand plus elasticity of supply. So the consumer's tax incidence is 100 into elasticity of supply upon elasticity of demand plus elasticity of supply. The producer's tax incidence, on the other hand, is 100 into elasticity of demand up divided by elasticity of demand plus elasticity of supply. So this, this formula can tell us that uh, who is going to get a higher tax burden. So is it going to be... So you, we, can, uh, we can use these formulas. For example, let's say the elasticity of supply is uh, two thirds. So very elastic. Elasticity of demand is, um, let's say half. Okay, so less elastic. So we can see who will have a higher tax burden. So elasticity of supply is higher, right? So this is going to be two thirds upon two by three plus one by two. Yeah. If I solve this, it becomes 2 by 3 upon, if this is 6, 4 plus uh, 3. So this becomes, this is 2 by 3 into 7 by 6. So this becomes 3. Uh, sorry, this becomes 2. So this is 4 by 7. So 4 seventh of the burden. And we can, into if you do 100, you get in percentage terms. So four seventh of the tax incidence would be borne by the consumer, and three by seventh of the tax incidence would be borne by the producer. Why? Because the producer is has more elastic demand uh, supply, 
so he is going to share take a lesser uh, part of the tax burden and a consumer has less elastic uh, demand so he's going to take a higher share of the tax burden all right everyone thank you so much for watching this and uh, please subscribe and please look out for the next videos thank you